Hey guys, welcome to Gen Z Codes. In this video, we're going to create a guess the number project. But first, in order to do this, we have to learn about the random method. Have you ever played a solitaire card game or Minesweeper or some similar game? Did you notice that every time you play the game, you get different results? So, how exactly does this happen? The key is a random number generator. This generator simply produces a different number every time it is referenced. Java has several methods for getting random numbers. We're just going to use one of them, a random generator of integers. The generator uses the Java random object. Like the scanner object we've seen previously, this object is not built into the basic Java language. It is in the API package named java.util.random. So to use this package, we use the import statement. So that would be over here, we'd say import java.util.random. All right, so um, in the random uh, package, we're just going to be using one of the methods like we mentioned. But before that, what we have to do is we have to construct it like we did with the scanner um, method object, right? We said scanner, my scanner is equal to new scanner, um, is e uh, and we put in parentheses, we put system dot in. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to say random, my random is equal to new random, and then we're just going to put parentheses over there. All right, so the one method that we're going to be using from this package is this. It's my random dot next int, right? And in these parentheses, actually, we put a limit. We put that as a comment, actually. Right. So what this limit is, it's basically how many out out of how many numbers you want the program to pick a random number from. So, for example, if the limit was 5, then it would pick a number from 0 to 4, because that would be 5 numbers, right? It would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those would be the 5 numbers from which the uh, program would choose a random integer from, right? And that's basically how it kind of works, right? So if I put it as 10, it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So it starts from 0, and it would usually end 1 before the number that you've put in. So if it was 9, it would start from 0, end at 8, right? So it's not inclusive of the number that you've actually put inside those parentheses. All right, so um, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a very simple project. Actually, I'm just going to use one line over here. I'm going to say system.out.println and I'm going to say the random number is and over here I'm going to say my random dot next int and in parentheses I'm going to put 10, right? So let's actually run this program and then I'll discuss it. Yeah, so as you can see the first time it says the random number is 1. Second time it says also 1, third time it says 7, then we get 2, 9, 8, and basically every time it'll generate a different number usually, right? And that's kind of how this works, right? It'll just choose a completely random number from the range that you've given the, from the limit actually that you've given the computer program and the way that you've coded it. All right. Now, another thing is, like I've said over here, right, it starts from zero and it will end one before the actual limit, right? So if you wanted to um, maybe do something where you had a game and you needed to use dice for that, right? In that case, you, would, you wouldn't start from zero. You would have to start from one and then you'd have to go up till six, right? So of course you could say that over here I just put seven, uh, over here, I just put 7 and it would give me um, up to 6. But over there, you still have 0 and you don't want that 0 when you're actually making a dice game, right? So what you would do is, let me show you actually, I'll create an integer and I'll say die number is equal to, and over here, I would say my random dot next int, and in parentheses, I would put 6, and I'd say plus 1. So what this does is that it starts from 1 instead of 0, and it goes up to 6, right? Because basically it would be my random.nextint, which would be 6, right? So this would generate, what, 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then with each of these, it would be plus 1. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's kind of how you start from 1 instead of 0 in case you ever need to. All right. So now that we know what the random method is, let's get working on our guess the number project. So first, let's go ahead and start a new project. Let's call it guess the number. Oh, wait. Guess the number. All right. Okay. So we're not going to be using any methods that we haven't learned yet. So what I want you to do is pause this video after I have explained to you exactly what the project is going to do, its purpose, and then what I want you to do is think about how the code would look and which methods you would be using. Maybe even try making it yourself, so maybe even try making the program yourself before actually um, replaying the video. Okay, so the first step in the code is for the computer to pick a random number between 1 and 10. And this random number must be stored somewhere. Next, the computer should ask for your guess, and then it must analyze your result and compare it with the chosen number. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start coding, and you can uh, copy it down, and if you haven't paused the video, I would really urge you to do that right now. Just think about it for a little bit and then maybe replay the video. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coding. So I'm going to start with importing the scanner object, of course, and I'm also going to import the um, random method. So the reason that I'm importing the scanner method right now, uh, sorry, the scanner object right now is because I want um, I actually want the scanner object so that I can ask for user input so that I can ask the audience or the users to guess a number basically. All right. So here we go and we're going to kind of construct the code, uh, construct the scanner and random methods now. So I'm going to say scanner my scanner is equal to new scanner and we're going to say system dot n over here. Then here we're going to say random my random is equal to new random I'm just gonna put the parentheses over here all right now the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, initialize some variables we want to declare them and then of course afterwards we initialize them so the first one that we have is computer number so this is basically the random number that the computer is going to generate as I mentioned um, after generating a random number, it needs to be stored somewhere. And the somewhere is, of course, going to be our variable that we are calling computer number. Then we have the next one, which is your guess, right? So this is just the audience's input, right? The user's input, rather, I would say. It's a user's input and what their guess is as to what the computer's number is. All right. Then after this, what we're going to do is we're going to assign a value to the computer number. So what we're going to say is it's going to be computer number is equal to my random dot next int and over here we're going to put 10 and we're going to put plus one right so this way we can say um like we can tell the audience that i am thinking of number from one to ten right and you can actually increase this limit maybe make it like 20 30 even 50 if you want it's really up to you i'm just keeping it 10 so that it's a pretty small limit right for now and just to keep it simple all right, and now after this, I'm going to say system dot out dot print line, and here inside this, I'm going to say I am thinking of a number between one and ten, or rather, I can say from one to ten, right? And after this, I'm going to actually put the do slash while loop that we learned in the previous video. So I'm going to say do, and I'm going to say system dot out dot print line, and in here I'm going to say, can you guess it, right? So basically, what I want to do, like what I want to achieve by using this do loop, at the do slash while loop, is that I get I can give 
the audience, I can give the users as many chances as they actually want. And then once they guess it, obviously it will break out of that loop and um, then program will just end, right? But unless and until they actually guess the number, they can keep on guessing and try to figure out what this number is. All right, so here I'm gonna say, your guess is equal to my scanner dot next int. And then I'm gonna say if, and here I'm gonna say, your guess is equal to the computer number, right? Then what should happen? It should say system dot out dot print line, and it should say, yes, you were correct, right? And after this, I'm actually gonna put an else if statement, right? Here I'm gonna say else if, your number is, let's say, lesser than the computer number. Oops, wait, that's your guess is less than the computer number. Then what I wanted to say is, um, so it's going to be system dot out dot print line. Nope, your uh, guess was too low, right? So basically, if the guess that the person inputs is lesser than the computer number, it's going to say, nope, your guess was too low. And then the next one is else if, we're also going to put another else if statement. So we're going to say else if your guess is greater than the computer number, then we want it to say system dot out dot print line. We want it to say, nope, your guess was too high. Right? So basically, if it's too low, it tells them that, you know, your guess is too low, guess something that's a bit higher, maybe. And if it's too high, then it basically tells them, and then the person will probably guess something that's a bit lower then, right? All right, so after this, what we're gonna say is we're gonna put the while, and we're gonna say while your guess is not equal to computer number. Right? And over here, actually, I think we can put the continue statement. All right. So let's run this program first, and then maybe I'll explain it to you, and you'll be able to understand it a bit better. All right. So it says, I'm thinking of a number from 1 to 10. Can you guess it? Let's say 5, you know? And it says, your guess was too low. So this time I'm going to say 7. Again, too low. I'm going to say 9, maybe? Too high, which means that it's probably 8. And it says, yes, you were correct, and then it ends, right? Now let's try a different thing, right? Where I just don't guess it at all. One, 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 whatever, right? So I keep guessing one, and it just doesn't stop because I still haven't guessed the number, right? So until and unless I guess the number, it's not going to stop the project. All right, so I think I've kind of discussed all of this already while I was making the code, but let's just go over it again, and let's kind of review it once more. All right, so first, we import the two objects, scanner and random. Why? Because we need user input, for, and that's why we use scanner. Random, we need to use a random module to, re, uh, to generate a random number, All right? Here we construct the two um, objects, right? We create these statements. Then the next two statements are, in, uh, are declaring two variables. The two variables we need are computer number and your guess. Computer number is the random number that is gonna be generated by the computer. Right, and that is done over here. Here is where we are assigning a value to it. Now, this is basically my random dot next int, and the limit is ten plus one. So what this is going to do is it's going to choose a number. So actually, this part is going to choose a number from zero to nine. Then to whatever number it is, it's going to add one. So it's going to be zero plus one, which would give you one. Then one plus one, two. Nine plus one, ten. At the end, right? So basically, it's going to pick a number. So in the variable. Um, the number that would be stored in that, the integer that would be stored in that, is going to be from 1 to 10. All right, then the next line we have is I am thinking of a number from 1 to 10. Basically, just prints it out. All right, now here we have the do and while um, loop. Right, so what this does is, just to recap again, um, it gives you an unlimited number of guesses, right? So what's going to happen is it's going to do this 
entire code, it's just going to do this entire thing at least once. Now, if you um, guess it right over here, if you guess it right, if your guess is the same as a computer number, it will say yes, you were correct, and then it will continue, which means that it will go back and review what the clause is, which is your guess is not equal to computer number. Now, because your guess is equal to computer number, this condition will be proven to be false, right? Which is why it will stop and it will come out of the loop, right? So that's kind of what this continued loop, uh, continue statement does. I know we didn't really discuss this in the previous um, videos, which we didn't actually have an example with it, which is why I want to use it specifically in this time. We could also use the break statement, but in this case, I just wanted to show you how you can use the continue statement, which is why I've used it over here. Um, anyways, right. So basically, uh, it keeps asking you for your guess until and unless you get it right, which is over here, and then it continues. So it reviews the while statements clause, the condition, and it, because it has now been proven to be false, because this is not, because your guess will now be equal to computer number, it comes out of the loop. However, if this clause is true is untrue and it's false basically, then it'll come to this one, right? Which is else if. Now what happens over here is let's say your guess is lesser than the computer's number. Then it will tell you that your guess was too low. And if it's higher, if it's greater, then it'll say, nope, your guess was too high. Right? And as we've seen, it basically just keeps on asking you for your guess until you actually guess the right number, right? Um, well, that's actually about it for this video. I hope you understood how this project works and how the random um, module actually functions. Um, in the, uh, in, and I hope you actually understood basically all the basics of uh, Java um, throughout all the videos that we've learned so, so far. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Happy coding.